to the Writer Groupie Podcast. I'm Kim Smith, the writing guru, bringing you discussions, insights, and insider details on planning, producing, promoting, and profiting as a writer. This is a podcast by writers for writers. You can find out more about Writer Groupie at www.writergroupie.net. And here's the next episode of Writer Groupie. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Writer Groupie. I believe this is episode 79. 79 it is. Oh, 79. We are really rocking with this show now. I'm so excited. And you got, if you haven't gone and listened to Dan Stout's interview, you really, really should do that. Dan is just a fabulous, fabulous guy. His book sounds delightful, and what I read of it is delightful, and I hope you'll make plans to get it. It's called Titan Shade, and we talk about it on the interview in episode 78. So be sure and go back and listen to Dan's uh, podcast. You can get that podcast on iTunes. You can also see the video on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. You can get it in either form or just read the blog post at writergroupie.net because we have all three on the blog post. We do it in text, we do it in audio, and we do it in video when we can so that you can consume the media the way you want to consume it. Bringing that up is always important for me because we have a goal. We're trying to reach a thousand subscribers on YouTube. We would love it if you would go out and just click the subscribe button on a video on YouTube under our channel so that we can get some subscriber stuff going on. That's kind of important for us to help us to grow. Um, we're trying to put the show in ways and uh, in, in places where you'll be able to find it. Um, we have a Facebook page. We have a Twitter page. We have a Tumblr and a Triber. We're at iTunes. We're at YouTube. And we're on our own website. So you guys just need to go out and find Writer Groupie Podcast. We're really excited to be able to produce this and bring it to you. And also... We are still looking for audio files, so if you are interested, I'm just reminding you, you can send us your audio file where you can read a blurb from your book or an excerpt from your book or just talk about the writing of your book. Give us some great information about your book and interest a reader. Just send us an audio file that's five to seven minutes long in any of the standard audio formats, which would be like an AIFF, a WAVE, or an MP3. I have some, maybe all of the ways you can send it to us listed in the sidebar on writergroupie.net. So y'all, if you don't know for sure, you can go out and get more information about that at the website writergroupie.net. But we do want your audio files. We'd love to be able to produce that and put it up for you. But if you don't want to record an audio file of your own, we will do that for you. All we'll need is the information you want to be uh, read on the air and it will cost you a mere ten dollars which you can pay for using our paypal link on the website at writerrupee.net did i forget anything bill i think you pretty much covered everything well and you guys you know we don't we don't do rejections on our audio files we don't have a format really <laughs> if we get some really bad audio files we might have to start rejecting people but that's not going to be our first choice but I was kind of thinking maybe it might be fun to talk about rejections. What do you think? Well, you know, rejections, that's just one of the things that the authors are going to have to deal with. The only author that has never had a stack of rejection letters is the author that has hardly any submissions. That's true. you got to submit to be rejected. And it only takes one acceptance to become a published author, so y'all remember that. I've heard it said that most authors could wallpaper a room with the amount of rejection letters that they get, and I know I got my own fair share when I was sending out. So it's a common disease that writers have to deal with in the course of their journey. And just, you know, it's just something that, it's just a part of the writing experience. If you want to be published, you're going to be rejected. And, you know, I think writing... Um, submissions, you know, query letters and the like, that's a part of the learning process to be a writer also. Because query letters in and of themselves is a whole experience. If you've never done it, try it sometime. It's really interesting the way query letters are written 
Uh, it's even more interesting to see the rejections that come back from those efforts. I personally know that you can get a form rejection letter, you know, because your query wasn't written well enough. You can get a personalized rejection because it was written really well, but maybe it just wasn't the right time or perhaps it wasn't the right material for that particular publisher. But, you know, a few things to remember before you send out a submission is, Make sure you're sending it to the right person and don't send multiple submissions. You know, publishing houses have a lot of people who read their submissions and you really don't need to send information to each and every one of them. That will get you kind of thrown in the round file pretty quickly. There's a few things you should consider whenever you're getting ready to send out a submission and that would be, you know, what are the publisher's guidelines? How do they want to get that? information about your work do they want you to send them you know the first chapter do they want you to send them the first 50 pages do they want you to send them just a synopsis every publishing house has a different requirement and so you need to go out and you need to do your homework do your due diligence and find out just exactly how they want to receive that submission and what their guidelines are also there's some particular formatting that they require in a submission. If you're sending them, say, the first chapter, there may be some formatting guidelines that you need to follow. Um, maybe they don't want it in a Courier new font. Uh, maybe they don't want it in an eight-point font because it hurts their eyes. Whatever they say, whatever they want, be sure and give them what they ask for. But it is inevitable that at some point or another, you're going to get a rejection letter from a publisher. And, you know, you just need to take it and you need to look at it. You need to analyze it and you need to figure out why it happened. You know, what is it about that submission that didn't get accepted? And then, you know, hopefully at some point down the road, you're going to get a yes. You're going to get either a letter or a phone call from the publisher that you've submitted to saying, yes, yes, we're interested and we want to talk to you further about this book or this piece of work, whatever it is that you've submitted for. And I certainly hope that that happens for you because, you know, to me, that is one of the best things that can happen in a writer's life is for a publisher to say yes. I wish you great luck with that. Now, we want to talk about our upcoming guest. Hey, Kim. Our upcoming guest for podcast number 80, hard to believe it's going to be 80 already, is R. Weir. He's the author of the eight-book Jarvis Man P.I. series. Uh, we'll also be talking about his latest release, which is The Front Range Butcher. And he's got another release coming out on March the 25th called Man in the Crossfire. Hopefully we'll have enough time to cover both of those books because they sound just delightful. And I just don't know how this guy has been around to write eight books and I haven't heard about them until now. So this is exciting. This is going to be a PI series, you guys. So if you're into that kind of stuff, that kind of a book, and you like that kind of a story and you haven't read any of our Weir's books, please plan on tuning in. Episode 80 will be with R. Weir. And if you go out and you subscribe on YouTube, all of our episodes will show up in your feed and you'll never miss another one. How's that for great? If you want to find out more about R. Weir, go to rweir.net. Weir, spelled W-E-I-R. And that's about it for us tonight. We are Weir and ready to go. Oh, that was so, so lame. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by E.J. Linden, the author of A Private Practice. And the product description reads, Someone is murdering men around the city of Pittsburgh. The victims have one thing in common. They've all been identified as perpetrators of domestic violence. Detective Susan Wyckoff and Frank Dillard are on the case. Their only clue? The letter carved into the bloodied palms of each of the victims. E.J. Linden is a writer of mystery and suspense, words that also define the author. A Private pa Practice is E.J.'s debut novel featuring Detective Susan Wyckoff. E.J. lives to write. When not writing, E.J. enjoys pizza and beer with friends, watching pro football, and long walks in the park. Okay, that last part isn't quite true. 
Watch for more to come from E.J. Linden. Available for Kindle on Amazon. Infinity Author Services for your author services needs. We create professionally designed book covers as well as provide editing, promotions, update your social media accounts, and WordPress site. Let Infinity Author Services increase the exposure of your novels with our exciting promo packages. You can find out more at InfinityAuthors.com. Infinity Author Services for the indie author in you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Writer Groovy. For booking information, show notes, and more, visit writergroupie.net.